ladies and gentlemen, I need your help here today. Speaker after speaker said the same thing. Raising taxes hurts the poor. It makes jobs harder to find, puts more people on assistance. It destroys families, and we have to pay for it. We're paying too much taxes. But I did a little checking, and the problem may not be how much tax is being paid, but who is paying it or not paying it. So I'm finishing up my tax forms on April 15th because, like most last-minute filers, I owe a tax instead of getting a refund. Now, I don't mind paying taxes as long as everyone pays about the same rate. But since I'm what you call middle class, that's not the case. Your uh, income has not been growing as much as the high earners, and your proportion of your income in taxes is higher than the high earners. The burden has really been borne on the uh, backs of those families who make somewhere between uh, 65000 and 400000 They pay 12.4%. And those families above $400,000 a year pay about 8.9. So uh, I'll ask you, sound fair? No, not really. It wasn't always this way. Back in the 70s, when Wendy Anderson was governor, Democrats and Republicans agreed on what was called the Minnesota Miracle, which took the burden off of property owners and raised the income tax. The kind of dollars that were generated were invested right back into Minnesota's people and places, and this state rocketed to the top in terms of economic performance, educational performance, and quality of life indicators. And we've been remaining in the top uh, five to ten for those, those decades. However, in recent years, in the past six or seven years, policy wisdom has changed. We've become regressive at the top, and um, there are many indicators in which our quality of life has been dropping. It sounds like the system has been getting more and more out of whack. What's causing that? It's simple policy. Who remembers those immortal words of Ronald Reagan who said, government is not the solution to the problem, government is the problem. Reaganomics still resonates with many policymakers. There's some assumption that if we don't touch the wealthy, if they, if they maintain their wealth, that they're going to be making um, infusions into the larger economy, it will trickle down and that the rest of the state will benefit. That has not proven to be true. Um, instead, uh, the, the kind of income that we've been seeing, the kind of income growth, has been something like 50% increase in the last 10 years. Uh, state and federal policies are tilting toward letting those folks keep their money, whereas income growth for the middle class has only been about 28%. Did your income go up double digits the last four years? No! The wealthy have gained twice as much in income earnings. They've benefited handsomely by um, economic prosperity, to be sure, uh, but also for tax policies that have been um, allowing them to retain their, their earnings. Um, the reverse has been true for the middle class. Their earnings have been less, and they have been paying proportionally more in, in income taxes. As a single man, I would like to spend the money how I would like to spend it, and light rail is not one of those options for me. We've lost a sense of we, and there's been an increasing focus on me. And the more money I can keep for myself, it works for me, right? Um, if I have to share uh, my, my um, profits or my revenues with others, um, it doesn't seem perhaps fair to the individual. What the individual fails to recognize is that the person with the, the capacity who wants to keep it to themselves doesn't also build the road that takes them down the highway to the corporation where their publicly educated employees work. The days of taking care of people on the backs of the hardworking people are over. When we think about we, it's not a matter of me or, uh, let's say, a wealthy person giving a portion of their income check to, to their poorer neighbor, but rather putting into, into the statewide pool the resources that are distributed equally and fairly for the benefit of all of us. Washington politicians or St. Paul politicians cannot spend your money better than you can. What we argue at Growth and Justice is that the revenues that are generated in the state and um, should not reside in the pockets or in the bank accounts of a small percentage of the population, but rather, when done progressively, the revenues go back into investing in our people and places. Our economy grows more broadly, more fairly, when we invest in our people in the form of education and health. 
and in places like the infrastructure and our environment and people come here for those reasons and when people come here and stay here that continues to grow the economy. We have smart people in this state. We have a beautiful place to live and to raise our families. Um, but when we diminish or um, eliminate the kind of quality of life that we've had, we're hurting ourselves and we're hurting our economy. I can't help wonder, are there other groups like this who are getting together and rallying for higher taxes? <laughs> a good percentage, nearly 70 percent, recognize that the investments in education and health and transportation are in the forefront of their minds and that that contributes to their quality of life. And they said they are willing to pay for it in the form of an income tax increase with the caveat that there's some measure of accountability. And we recognize that. So we're prepared to um, call for an income tax increase with demonstrated accountability when those dollars are invested in our best assets, our people and our place.